crypto market just got pulled down after hitting that $1 trillion mark. And we are correcting. But remember, some coins are touching the all-time highs or went 100% above the all-time highs. And now, correcting to the downside. So as you look at these all-time highs and the percentage to reach that, you can understand one stuff clearly. When you are entering the market, I got an easy trick for you to enrich your portfolio. Just go to this all-time highs and you see this, which has maximum potential or, you know, which is down the maximum. Say XRP here is minus 93 percentage. So the upside, if it goes to the all-time highs, is like 1,400 percentage. You can compare it with others and that will show you which has the maximum potential and which has less. Now, is it only this percentage? No, right? Because when you go through this, you kind of see a lot of different coin, which are, okay, 1,600 percentage or even 7,000 percentage and others. But you will have to combine their long-term view, their current pattern and fundamental as of now to understand how much it will go to the upside or the chances or the likely possibilities that if these coins are going back towards their all-time highs. Now, while you combine all of that, you should consider these before executing your trade, not after, because I see many guys entering into a trade and then saying, okay, so I actually got in, but I don't know why I got in. I want to manage my portfolio now. That's going to be really difficult if you don't know in which asset you are. Market was showing bearishness, and I informed that this is the probability not just for XRP Heights, uh, you know, for the entire market, we are looking to the downside. So it's not only that, but also for other assets inside the altcoins, you're seeing similar pattern. But one of the main positive stuff here is people panic and most guys, when they are in panic, emotions are high and they do stuff similarly. And that's why you see similar patterns when price is going down. But look at the altcoin market cap. You can see one stuff for clearly, right? If we are going to bounce here, majority of the alls are going to bounce with it to the upside. Now that would be like 10 to 20 percentage bump from here in this rising trend line. And it should show that bullish market attitude. Welcome to the scientific investor family where we discuss crypto and science behind investing regularly. When the entire market is going down, there is still, you know, some coins which were not turning bearish like that and holding on to its supports. And I kind of highlighted this uh, to my patrons, uh, especially it was actually in the platinum tier. And then after like 10, 15 minutes, I was looking at that opportunity and I was really surprised because when I saw the opportunity, I kind of inform like, you know, the targets are still valid. We are still moving towards the target. And then this kind of happened. In just five to 10 minutes, the price popped to the upside. So these are opportunities inside the market when the entire market is turning bearish. You still have some popping to the upside. That's why we saw the altcoin market is in a bullish phase. It's just correcting down like this, right? So it came back, it reached a support and it was bouncing. So that bounce in the initial area was inside some of the small coins, some of the medium coins. The problem with that is you need to be on the right one to get that bounces. Otherwise, you learn the fundamentals and then position yourself using technicals in any different asset which you believe in. Say XRP is one among the asset which majority of us or especially I concentrate fully. Why? Because of its characteristics and efficiency. But right now, along with the SEC lawsuit which is already ongoing and you know running behind, we are getting another one. Ripple hit with yet another lawsuit 
or a securities law violation. Now, when you read through this article, you will understand one stuff. These guys, you know, either they are amateur or at least even if they are stating their smart money, I personally don't think they are. Because I never bought XRP thinking that I'm buying a share in Ripple, the company, because this is an open source, decentralized technology and a digital asset, which is open to anyone who can buy it from the XRP ledger. Mm -hmm. So these are, you know, directly connected to uh, different exchanges. You're buying it over there. That doesn't make any connection for you between that company. Now, that's the one side of it showing that securities law, right? But the other side, which is, you know, currently being highlighted is different. Now, we'll explain through all of that. Hang on. So in this particular article, when you come inside, the guy who is uh, doing this is kind of, uh, you know, uh, Tyler to me and he's highlighting one stuff. You know, I was buying the stuff, blah, blah, blah. I was thinking the price is going to go upside. But, you know, Brad Gulling has just sold 150 million worth of XRP from uh, 2017 to 2019. When he was, you know, saying this is going to the upside, I'm long this asset. Now, this is similar idea laid out by SEC, right? There is nothing new here, basically. Just another guy put a case. That's it. But say you are Brad Garlinghouse or, you know, anyone who hold a lot of asset. Will you not be tempted to take out your profits eventually? Say you hold 1 million Bitcoin. Won't you take profits? Whenever it goes a little bit up, say 5 or 10% of your portfolio or 20%, won't you trade it? You know, that's not a big deal considering these guys have huge bags. They would be taking their profits because they are also human beings with emotions. Now, the securities law has to be clarifying this. One of the aspects which this all goes to is not stating XRP is a security. Instead, it's more aligned towards how these assets are being distributed in the market. So that means mostly it's going to be over the supply control of Ripple, the company. In that case, I think Stellar Network saw this coming way before when they burned their 50 percentage of supply. Now, if XRP need to do the same, then, you know, the valuation should go up. I agree. In short term, that would be a great scenario. But in the long run, when you actually look at the real use case, and the burn rate, it's kind of okay because XRP Ledger is kind of uh, prepared in a way that if, now uh, I read a couple of times that if required, the owners can create additional with, you know, certain conditions has to be met by that time. But even if they need more, they can actually do that. So as of now, if you are looking at the use case, we know the use case, but the adoption rate is not picking or gaining momentum. Ripple, the company, is doing best. The network is increasing, just the regulatory clarity is lacking. So once we get this regulatory clarity, as you see through this, you know, these stuff won't be based on there. Now, we'll go through this, but before that, I would like to take you guys through this tweet. Stuart highlights this, some objective analysis on SEC's complaint. Now that's actually done by uh, Hall. Now, he was previously in SEC, and if you actually go through that document, he kind of clearly highlights this is a regulatory uncertainty. That's it mainly, because there is no regulatory clarity. The cloud of that confusion is still over. Now, in the tweet below, Stuart highlights, U.S. regulatory environment is unpredictable. Now, think you are doing your business in an area where regulators can come at any time and say, you, you, this is not right stuff. And think they'll allow you, in Ripple's case, they allowed them to work in that manner for a long time, seven, eight years, and then started saying this. So what were they doing in the initial stages? So if they are saying 2017 to 2019, Brad was selling this, what were they doing back in 2020, early 2020, or, you know, late 2019? At least, no, they were not doing this. Why? Because the market cycle was anyway going down. When the market cycle started to turn and move to the upside, then was the time they came in and pushed the price to the downside. So there is kind of some 
agenda here if you understand this or not now when you look at the actual crypto market btc is having the most of it publicly traded firm buys tons of btc says holding btc is superior to holding us dollar now that one i will agree because fiat currency is a depreciating asset and why would you actually want to own that but only the question is are you buying btc at the right time meaning if it's in a market cycle where it's gonna go down in short term it's okay because you are holding for long run now you'll actually come into the btc dominance and if you are following this you'll understand okay in a shorter time span it's going down what if on a longer time span btc corrects three wave to the downside in a day or a three day chart that would actually impact this decision taken here in that case you know even the dollar or the digital dollar would be better we'll have to wait and see but these perspectives have different opinions right and the one which i'm stating is kind of looking at the macro scenario here xrp crypto wolf highlights this stuff head of the bank of international settlements highlight this thing bitcoin might break down altogether now he's pointing towards you know bitcoin is inherently risky and only central bank should issue digital currencies so that is central bank digital currencies or cbdc's now the question is if they are to look at this then in majority of their reports what they are actually doing or executing with different central banks they are working on blockchain technology to move their cbdc's and exchange them so they need a bridge asset to do that and it should be neutral right because recently when the we heard uh, from gary that you know gary from uh, the SEC and BTC, Ether and others, you know, are kind of 50% uh, having huge minor capacity from China. They won't actually allow it to happen like that. So that is one of another issue you are seeing here without proper regulatory clarity, even from that BIS chief. Mm -hmm. Now, Michael is showing this one, you know, when they are showing dollar is the stuff which you have to use and all due to heavy trading volume, gain stop syndrome, perhaps. So, Thousands of users reported issues with Vanguard, TD Ameritrade, Ameritrade and others. So, you know, when these kind of institutions need an infrastructure update, move into blockchain, they can reduce many of these issues. Even if it is a, starting from a hack or towards the entire use case, the technology can support them and help them. James tweeted this one out and he kind of uh, sent that to me and this looks perfect. ACI Worldwide selected to participate in Federal Reserve's pilot program for its upcoming real-time payments offering, the FedNow service. Now, previously we went through the FedNow service, ACI Worldwide too. Now, ACI Worldwide, if you are looking at it, that's bullish for XRP community. Why? Because they are working with RippleNet they are doing these experiments they now understand why they have to do this so once these fed now service comes alive i think you know the stimulus would be moving through that but it's not sure as of now but you see investments moving into crypto when we say crypto it's into btc not into alts as of now but the general market, when you look at this, you see a lot of opportunities, right? Say Bitcoin Cash, 1000 percentage. So when you come, you see in privacy coins, say Zcash, you have 7000 percentage. So is it like, you know, that's the best opportunity? There is a question mark because regulators are going against complete privacy coins. If it is a privacy coin handled by an institution, Mm -hmm. at one end and another end another financial institution which are regulated then it should be fine because that's similar with you know xrp is not a privacy coin but the efficiency would be like that right the case there is banks don't want you to see what they are doing so they need privacy they inside the network but here it's the opposite right so as you go through this you know You'll see hundreds of different assets with 1,000, 1,500, 3,000 percentage and a lot of upside. 
you first have to look at the fundamental. Second, what pattern they are forming on shorter, medium and longer time frame. Because if that is the case, then you're going to get a lot more upside if you get those assets which are aligned to the upside with fundamentals and technicals. Now, when you look at the uh, altcoin market, you understand it's going to the upside, but XRP BTC pay is showing you the downside. Then when you come to XRP USD pay, it's also showing you the downside. When BTC dominance is going down and altcoin dominance shows you upside, this is a moment where XRP BTC is showing you downside, XRP USD is showing you downside. So that's a bit of confusion there in the market itself without huge direction. Now, if you look at this pattern on a forever, XRP broke to the downside. So the target is like 20% to the downside. So if you put that into USD terms, it would be around 0 0.19, 0 0.18. So if you are putting your orders for buy in case if it wicks lower, like what the BTC dominance did, it would be say 0 0.18, 0 0.2, like that, right? I personally did my orders in that manner. So if you are looking to make profit, you also need to understand the macro scenario. Here on a monthly, you are able to see that we went up. That was a huge fake out. We came down, but right now, on a monthly candle, we are still on green. And not only that, the green candle opened at a support, meaning the previous candle was closed at the support and this one opened at the support. That means we are still holding that support and the price is above that support line. If this month closes in green, that means we are still above that broken trend line resistance previously now this one is resistance we broke about we came back we are retesting that and if this retest looks successful and we close above then yes the 50 day moving average is acting as a resistance but based on the macd and the rsi we would be moving upside on the monthly so that's the macro scenario for xrp usd now if you look at uh, you know medium to long term on xrp usd using a daily chart you can see that the short term volatility which you're expecting here is possible. We showed that yesterday, but in between lies a support zone. So this support resistance zone may push the price without letting it go all the way down towards 0.18. So in this case, if you are considering putting an order, 0.18, okay, considering the other one, 0.2 here and 0.21 or 0.22 should help. If it dips, say, towards 0.2 and bounce all the way up, then it would help you to actually attain more of these units. So if you are looking for these kind of alerts to get into, like which we uh, showed you for uh, Algo, Algorand and other stuffs, you know, Elrond just went 10% up when the entire market is going down. That's actually based on the pattern and it just retested its recent highs. So if you are looking for these kind of updates, you can look at Patreon where we have around 640 patrons and members right now who are reaping these benefits. So if you would like to look at that, you can join in the basic tier as of now and the real tier which you want, you can upgrade on the first or just wait for a couple of days and enter on February 1st on your time zone. So you don't pay double, right? I hope you received value for your time. And if you really did, please do support the channel. Hit that like and subscribe button. I will meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.